So let's talk about Uranus first. Any planet that's getting affected by Uranus in the chart will always be, be put in a position where this planet wants to break free, wants to break away from something. And so when you're looking at Uranus, it doesn't want to conform. Uranus is a planet that doesn't want to be the same as everything, everyone else. And so what the planet, what Uranus is trying to do to the planet that it's in contact with, it is trying to take it right outside of the normal way of using it or your comfort zone or the traditional way of doing something or anything same old, same old. It wants to break ground with that particular planet. It wants to move that particular planet forward in some kind of way. It wants to renew it. It wants to reinvent it. And Uranus is a, is a, a planet that I feel um, in some ways is even harder than Saturn. You know how Saturn has got the, um, got the reputation of being a pretty tough cookie? Um, and it does have that, but there's something about the Saturn energy that I always feel wants you to buckle down and do the hard work because I truly believe that it wants you to achieve something in the end. Where Uranus, the energy of Uranus feels to me like its emphasis is just about constantly pushing you forward, moving you forward in some kind of way. It's evolutionary, of course, and revolutionary, but it has a much harder effect on you in some kind of ways than Saturn. It feels like it, it's, it's ready, it's really ready to, um, uh, to shake you up a lot more than Saturn. Um, and there's a, there's a, a non-caring about your personal, um your your personal needs or your personal attachments that go along with this it's almost like something has to change something and it's almost like I, it has to change at the expense of your feelings it doesn't take into consideration your feelings at all now saturn does this as well saturn doesn't take into consideration your feelings but to me, Saturn always feels to me like Saturn is like it would be much better for you to put in the hard work here. Um, but if you don't, that's up to you. But you realise if you don't, you know, life is going to become extremely difficult for you. It feels almost a little bit like Saturn does this kind of, you know, big brother kind of coach talk with you about it where Uranus doesn't even take you into consideration on that level. Uranus is pretty much like it's time for things to, to change. It's time for things for you to get out of your neediness or get out of stuff that's keeping you um, that's keeping you stagnant or keeping you replaying your same old stories. So we're going to just actually just turn your life upside down and whatever happens to you in this grand scheme of things, who cares? You have, you know, it has to move. It has to change. It doesn't have, I, I, I feel that so strongly with Uranus. And when you have Uranus in aspect to a planet, it kind of has this energy about it. It has this energy of always trying to disengage you from the feeling that are connected with that planet. It's almost making you want to become very detached from how that planet feels or what that planet wants or what that planet needs. It kind of almost doesn't care so much about that other planet. It will do what it has to do to that other planet for it to, to change. And sometimes it can actually be quite, quite hard, uh, quite difficult. And some people might even say quite cruel, you know. Uranus opposite the moon, you know, will always have situations of people, you know, maybe emotionally abandoning you in some kind of way 
or feeling on a certain level like you're going to be up against people who can't emotionally commit. You know, it's almost like the moon's need, the moon's attachment to love and comfort and bonding and home and connection is always feeling on a certain level like it can never really get what it wants. It can never really have what it wants. And so the Uranian energy doesn't have any sort of sympathy at all for the moon and will bring in as many different experiences in your life that will constantly play in contrary to the moon and sometimes to the point where you're always feeling high and dry, left high and dry emotionally until you get it, until you get it. And getting it, as far as Uranus is concerned, getting it is about you having to move forward emotionally. Now, the moon is always very attached to what it knows. The moon is always very attached to the past. You know, it's very attached to the familiar, which is exactly the opposite to what Uranus is about. Of course, Uranus is about the future. Uranus is, and Uranus is very much in the head. It, it's a thinking, it's a thinking um, planet. And so whatever the moon wants, as far as holding, uh, going back, Uranus is always pushing forward. And so for the moon to really, really, really have a, a really strong understanding of how to to deal with the Uranus, especially when it's in hard aspect with it, it has to learn how to detach emotionally. It has to actually think of its life moving forward all the time. It has to think of its life as, as in, in, you know, in stages of, of flux and in stages of change constantly. And so for you to really handle a Uranus um, moon hard aspect in your chart, you will always be put in positions where you're going to feel on a certain level like you can't let your emotions get in the way of you being free, in other words. You know, you allowing yourself to become truly authentically you is one of them or allow yourself to truly move forward in life in some kind of way because the moon will always pull you back. It will always pull you back. It will always keep you stuck. It'll keep you stuck around shame, around guilt, around family pressures, around expectations, around the need for love, around the need to be nurtured, around the need to care, and the feeling that I can't actually move forward unless I have that. Uranus is always about you will have that and you can have that, but it's going to have to be in a completely different way. It's going to have to be in a way where, number one, not only you can do it for yourself, which is always a, a handy one to do, but it's a feeling of this feeling of coming home for you or this feeling of feeling safe for you, this feeling of the security for you is about this sense of you actually moving towards this rather than going back to it. So you're moving towards safety. You're moving towards love. You're moving towards security. You're moving towards home. You're looking for it, forward for it. You're not running backwards, where running backwards will always keep you stuck. So you'll never feel safe. You'll never feel at home. You'll never feel comfortable. You'll never feel loved if you have a moon Uranus in hard opposition, if you stay at home or if you stay in the familiar or if you stay looking for it, you know, in stagnant places. It will never be there for you. It will never be there for you. You'll always be disappointed. It's always, always about you becoming free, about you becoming authentic, about you becoming your own person, about you being different, about you being left of centre, about you being eclectic and about you moving forward. That's where it is for you. So you have to cut off from the emotional needs of the old and move towards the emotional excitement of becoming something new, becoming something different. So that's Uranus moon. So let's have a look at Neptune. Now, Uranus hitting other planets always has that kind of flavour as well. But, of course, the other planets, you know, the flavour of the other planets are definitely going to change the story quite a bit. 
Let's look at Neptune. Now, Neptune, I think, I really believe that Neptune is probably the most challenging of all the planets to integrate in the chart, really and truly, really, because for Neptune, you really, you really, really have to stop thinking like a human being. <laughs> you really do. The only way to survive with Neptune well is to stop thinking like a human being because if you think like a human being, you can never do Neptune well because Neptune is about a feeling of being able to not get caught up in our drama, you know, the drama of what we what we believe in, you know. We believe in everything is about loss, you know, or everything is about a sense of sadness or everything has got this feeling of disappointment or everything has got this feeling of frustration or everything has got this feeling of hopelessness, you know. As soon as you can let go of all those things, as soon as you can get, get let go of the human interpretation of life and actually start to see life from a completely different level, see life from the level of how our spirit, our soul sees it, as everything working out beautifully, you know, everything just working to plan. There is no beginning, there is no ending, there is no death, there is no separation, all those kind of things. If you can try your hardest, try your hardest to get into that mode, to try your hardest to get into this released mode, and the feeling you feel when you come into Neptune is a total, it's so light, it's such a light feeling. It's a feeling almost like you're floating. It feels like liquid mercury, you know, that feeling, because all the stuff that we go through as human beings on this planet is so heavy. It's so dense. We carry so much stress and worry and trauma and disappointment and we're letting people down and responsibility. And, it's such a heavy suit to carry. As soon as you can let all that go, as soon as you can let all that go, this is beautiful feeling. You can just, you know, it's like I don't know if you can all remember that Neptune um, image I used way back in level one when we were talking about Neptune for the first time with that girl just in that ocean. It was just a, such a beautiful feeling. So with Neptune, you have to in some kind of way come into this sense of release. You have to. Otherwise, with Neptune, you're always going to be disappointed. Always going to be disappointed. Neptune is always going to disappoint you if you look at it through human eyes. Because Neptune is so big and human eyes are so small. So we try to fit this huge, great, big, endless, boundless energy, universal energy, and we try to get it out of little tiny things. We try to find it in people. We try to find it. You know, in a job, we try to find it in something, you know, we're trying to find it in our outside stuff. It's never there. It's never there. And then we get worried about it. We stress about it. We build a drama about it. We build it out of proportion. We don't see it clearly. You know, all these Neptunian things, we get dis we get betrayed. We don't see, you know, we get we get caught up in the Neptunian ether, so to speak. But the Neptunian ether is only there when we're looking at it through human eyes. When we look at it through Neptunian eyes, when we look at it through the eyes of the soul, it's clarity. It's crystal clear. It's clearer than anything you've ever, ever, ever seen before. It only becomes foggy and it only becomes kind of all misty and all that kind of stuff when you're looking at it through human eyes because you're building something out of, you know, you're trying to get this fantasy, this beautiful dream or whatever it is, and then you're going to try to put it into a human experience. You know, you're trying to Disneyfy stuff that's not really there. And so there's a fine line between this, the real and the unreal with Neptune. So let's do the classic one. Let's do Neptune Venus. Neptune Venus in hard aspect, you know, it's classic. It's always going to go down the road. You know, Venus, 
Venus is very human, by the way, when I say she's human. I mean, we deal with her in, on a very human level, in a very human perspective, because we're here on the Earth plane. You know, and she does rule Taurus. She rules Libra as well, but she does rule Taurus. So she's about the beauty of the Earth and the beauty of the senses. She's also about the beauty of relationships and coming together with people and that feeling of harmony and peace and security and congruence. Now, here's a prime example. Here's a prime example of looking at it through human eyes because, again, if you're trying to find Neptune, if you're trying to find Neptune in the material, which is Venus, or if you're trying to find Neptune through somebody, which is Venus, you know, if you're trying to find this incredible kind of feeling, you're always, always, always going to be have the rug pulled out from under you, always. Now, because you're not going to be so-called seeing it clearly. You're going to be caught up in the ether of it all, you know. You're going to be caught up in the, the, the beautiful romance or the, the feeling of, of, um, of, you know, uh, this person being, you know, the white knight on the steed coming in to, to um, carry you off. Or you might get caught up with money. You know, Neptune, Venus can be money as well. You know, might get caught up with money and believing that money is going to be your saviour and all these things you can do with money. And um, there's disappointment in that. There's disappointment in both of those things because they never, ever, ever live up to your expectations if you're looking at it with human eyes. Now, you can still have great money, don't get me wrong, and you can still have beautiful relationships, don't get me wrong, with the Neptune and um, Venus in a hard aspect to each other. You can still have that. You're supposed to have that, by the way. You know, this is what you're supposed to have. But you've got to, you have to release. You have to release the ego needs around the fear of it being, you know, human. The fear of it, of, of it being your saviour, in other words. Oh, if I was rich, if I had all the money in the world, then my life would be just bliss, you know, that kind of thing. Um, put it this way, if you become rich and you have Neptune Venus and you become rich, you have to feel on a certain level like the money really doesn't make a big difference to your life to start off with. It's fantastic that it's here and you love it and appreciate it, but it really hasn't made made you happy, you know what I mean, because it could make you happy for a period of time in a human way and then it goes. But you know what I mean? There's a part of you now that realises that the money wasn't what it is about, really, because it hasn't filled that hole, that real hole that Neptune is all about. But another thing is about what would you do with your money? Neptune, Venus. You know, in a human way, you can splurge it all. You can lose it all. You know, you can do some really stupid things with it. You can gamble it away. You can party. That's Neptune, Venus. Or you can do some amazing things with it, with being able to be able to help people, be able to heal people, be able to bring people back to life again. And I mean that, you know, metaphorically. You can do some beautiful, beautiful, um, incredibly soulful, heartfelt spiritual stuff with the Neptune Venus money. Now, you can do this also with relationships. You can have a beautiful relationship with the person. You really can, but you're not going to be holding on to that person because you know that that person is not the be-all and end-all. You know that person is always going to be with you. Even after death, that person is with you. There's no such thing as separation for any of us. Do you realise that when we're all off this planet, you know, we're all back together again? Every single person on this planet you are never separated from because we're all from the same person. We're all from the same source. <laughs> So we have this understanding, this deeper understanding in relationships, so we don't need to cling on to them to start off with. But we can have this really, really, really beautiful connection with them on the level of two souls being together, on the level of two souls truly loving each other. And then you can actually have relationships outside of that. You can have beautiful relationships outside of that with your friends and with people in general where two souls are speaking to each other. Two souls are touching and you don't need to or want anything from them and they don't need or want anything from you. If you go into it in a human way, if you're wanting, thinking that these people are going to be in my nirvana, you know, these people are going to save me, 
then you're going to be you're going to be a prime target for being used for being used and for being abused and for people betraying you because you're going to go in with no boundaries you're not going to have any filters you know what i mean it's, you're going to have all these you know as you're going to all the sharks are all going to come in and you're going to believe them all you're going to think on on a certain level that they're trustworthy because you built up this whole great big story around the whole thing and of course what happens is you're not seeing it clearly anymore you're seeing it through human eyes like these people are actually going to be there for you you know they're actually going to be you know connected to you in a big way and this need to have them in your life uh, becomes too all-encompassing and of course that's very very human and and that feeling around that um, causes causes the the damage so to speak because it's always going to feel on a certain level like all these people slip through your fingers you know because you cannot have the neptunian thing or neptunian person and have be attached to it you know be attached to it or want something from it that you think is going to fulfill you or fill that or fill that emptiness inside of you it just doesn't work it doesn't happen that way it can never happen that way so your neptunian venus has to in some kind of way do some major release around this major letting go major forgiving and when i say forgiving i mean letting go of any of the human feelings you have for anybody and, and people and release it within yourself let it go within yourself so you can actually start to have relationships that feel like this they feel like you know that feel like you're floating now this is hard to do for all of us because we're here in human bodies going through human experiences so it is hard i'm not pretending it's easy it's challenging it's very challenging i'm a neptune venus person i have neptune venus in heart aspect in my chart so i know what i'm talking about so yeah um but it's it's something that i've i've learned over time still not great at it but a lot better than what i used to be a lot better than what i used to be but i know what it's all about so neptune and any other planet it's going to have the same kind of feeling and heart aspect. Pluto. Everyone is more scared of Pluto than any of the other planets because they always think, you know, Pluto is all about death. I did a reading and that finished at five, so I've only had just an hour break. <coughs> and she was terrified. She had planets in her eighth house and she had Pluto in hard aspect to a lot of her planets. So she was terrified. Does this mean I'm going to die? She kept saying, does this mean I'm going to die? You know, well, and I said to her, well, yeah, you are. We all are. <laughs> I'm going to predict one day you are going to die, you know. But, you know, the whole thing is, yeah. With Pluto in your chart, you will die. You will die, not necessarily because of Pluto. You know, you will die because we're human beings. But in Pluto, wherever Pluto is, you there's a big part of you that has to be killed off. It has to be killed off. It has to die this lifetime, and you have to be reborn. Wherever Pluto is, you have to be reborn. So you have to go through a death experience, not meta, not necessarily um, literally. Some people will, but not everybody. But it just means that a part of you, the part of you that you're most worried about, most scared of, um, you have your most issues with, the things that really push your buttons, the things that trigger you more than anything else, will get pushed this lifetime. Will get pushed again and again and again and again and again until one day you go, I don't know if I can get pushed to the edge anymore with this. I just feel on a certain level like I'm going to have to do something about it. So Pluto is about the power that you get, that comes with you, comes from you, once you start to 
go through whatever it is you have to go through and then go enough's enough and then start to come out the other side of the tunnel and rebirth again. So let's do Pluto Mars, okay? Let's do Pluto in hard aspect to Mars. Now, Mars, Mars is always about feeling on a certain level like it can be on this planet and it can it can make anything happen, you know? It it won't be defeated. You know, Mars is about not being defeated by anything. Mars is about making sure it's like it is major part of our willpower. You know how you can really, really see this in so many people. You know how people say they have willed themselves back to health or they can will themselves to death. That's Mars. That's Mars. Um they can actually will themselves into things. I will, you know, nothing is going to stop me. Nothing is going to defeat me. I will do it. Um, Bruce Lee has Mars square Pluto. Yeah. I can imagine. So can you see how this Mars energy, this Mars energy goes down the road of wanting to win, you know, wanting to be as fearless as possible? But really, when it all boils down underneath that, it's not necessarily about being, you know, Captain Courageous, um, you know, like a superhero. I mean, if that's the way you want to play it, well, good on you. But it's more, it's more about making sure that everything in your life you can get through the power of just by just being you, about not being defeated. So Mars is always, wherever you have Mars in your chart, this is where you get challenged all the time. People will always want to challenge you wherever Mars is because Mars attracts enemies. And when I say enemies, I mean competition. Mars attracts people who want to go opposite it, want to go against it all the time. And so, you know, in competition, Mars, Mars is, is sport, you know, men. You know, men love competition, don't they? Men love football. They want to win. You know, the the um, soccer things on at the moment. You know, and they're all screaming at the television. You know, this is all master. Where, 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 where? So, the whole thing is about Mars. Is about this this testosterone need, and this is in both sexes, to make sure that you get your needs met or your desires met or make things happen. So the power of the will is incredibly strong, incredibly strong. And so many of us don't believe this. So many of us feel on a certain level like we have no willpower, you know. There's going to be things in life that challenge us to the point where we can't do anything, where we're stuck, you know. Um, I'm not allowed to, my husband won't let me, or my family, you know, my family were all, you know, very meek and mild, and so I grew up thinking, oh, I've got to get to the back of the line, I can't get my piece of cake and all that kind of stuff. When you've got Pluto in hard aspect to Mars, squaring Mars or opposing Mars, Pluto is going to be your challenger, in other words. So there's going to be a major fear in you in some in some part of your chart that is actually going to be the part that keeps on stopping you from believing that you're strong, that you're courageous, that you can make things happen. So all through your life, you'll be triggered. You'll be triggered. You will have people coming into your life and stopping you from doing things, getting on top of you, bossing you around being aggressive with you or just just basically controlling you, um, overpowering you in any way until you get to the stage where you actually turn around and grow a pair of balls, in other words, you know, and actually start to stick up for yourself. Mars is about being independent. Mars is about running its own show. Mars is about being self-full. And so Pluto, opposite Mars. So 
so we've got Muhammad Ali here, Ingrid's just put up here, and we've got Bruce Lee. So can you see how Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee have really over, overly emphasised their Plutos and their Marses in, in life? This can be a real, you know, this is a real kind of um, uh, a strong human kind of way of showing I'm going to be the best and nobody's going to get in my way. You know, what? this is Pluto Mars. It's kind of like any fear it comes into my way, I'm just going to keep on ploughing through it. This can be, these guys have done it really, really well. They've done it really, really well. Who knows exactly how they're playing it more personally, but they've de definitely done it really well within the, um, you know, the, the more uh, visual areas of their life, um, the Pluto and Mars. But there's most of us, most of us will stay frightened. Most of us will stay frightened all our lives and never, ever, ever really become accomplished or strong or get what we want because Pluto will constantly feel uh, like it's holding us down, controlling us. So, you know, a hen-pecked husband or a hen-pecked wife, you know, it doesn't have to be. This could be Pluto Mars, you know, or a parent is Pluto Mars, you know, depending on what's going on. A partner or a family member or a sibling or anything that stops you from actually being or becoming becoming strong, powerful and getting what you want and being who you are. So Pluto, Mars, then we've got Moon, Uranus and Venus, Neptune. You kind of get the feeling of the challenges in the hard aspects. Now the soft aspects, okay, I find the soft aspects, especially from the harder planets, especially from the outer planets, I mean not the harder planets, but the outer planets, um, the challenge is still there. I think the challenge is still there, but it's a lot easier for that person, a lot easier for that person to um, bring to life. It's a lot easier for that person to um, integrate, a lot easier for that person to manifest. It doesn't come across as something that they have to really work hard at. It's kind of part of their personalities that glide relatively well together, but still at the same time with a, with a soft aspect, with a sextile or with a trine, there still is that part of you that has to put the work into it. You still have to put the work into getting taking the advantages out of it if you know what I mean. You might be helped along to a certain degree, but, you know, I often find soft aspects can enable a lot of the time. You can get other people to do them for you or, you know, things come into your life and make it easier for you so you don't actually have to put the work into it. Um, I don't think that's very, to me, I don't think that's very useful with the soft aspect. I think it's kind of like just going along for the ride. I don't think you're participating in actually doing the soft aspect and getting the advantage out of the soft aspect and actually doing it in your life in a pur purposeful and meaningful kind of way, which I believe soft aspects are all about. 